So now let's read through another past paper question and the answer. And this time I will read it all the way through and then you can hopefully start to see trends in how you can write a solid level nine response to these past paper questions. Read the following extract from Act 2, Scene 2 and then answer the question that follows. At this point in the play, Romeo has secretly returned to the Capulet Orchard after the Master Ball. Romeo. But soft. What light through yonder window breaks? It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou her maid art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestral livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady, oh, it's my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eyes discourses. I will not answer it. Empty bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business to entreat her eyes to twinkle in the spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would, through the airy region, stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. Starting with the speech, explain how far you think Shakespeare presents Romeo as lovesick. Write about how Shakespeare presents Romeo in this extract and how Shakespeare presents Romeo in the play as a whole. So let's have a look at this essay and I'll read it all the way through. In the tragedy, Romeo and Juliet, Romeo is depicted by Shakespeare as being at the mercy of his emotions, and in the duration of the play he appears to be very lovesick and ruled by his passions. Within the extract above, we as the audience witness Romeo has become extremely lovesick after the meeting after meeting Juliet at Lord Capulet's masquerade ball. Moreover, elsewhere in the play we find that Romeo was initially melancholic and lovesick over his unrequited love for Rosaline and he later became lovesick and heartbroken after leaving Juliet after he was banished from Verona. Shakespeare successfully depicts Romeo as lovesick and his passionate persona will be examined in depth. Within the extract, Romeo has met Juliet and soon after meeting her at the masquerade ball ended, he decided to scale the Capulet orchard wall and find Juliet's bedroom. As he is standing beneath her balcony, he looks into her room and states, but soft, what light yonder window breaks. It is the east and Juliet is the sun. Romeo speaks in metaphors using celestial imagery to describe Juliet as the sun and this illustrates his obsession for Juliet which is making him lovesick. He is extremely enamoured by Juliet and is willing to risk his life to see her again. To be sure in the play, we as the audience learn that Romeo is Montague and his family are sworn enemies of the Capulets which is the family that Juliet belongs to. Romeo appears to be so infatuated by Juliet that he's willing to risk death if he's discovered in the Capulet Orchard so that he can see Juliet. Therefore, Romeo is presented as being extremely lovesick, which leads him to risk his own life and well-being in order to be close to Juliet, despite only having met her hours before. As the extract progresses, Romeo catches sight of Juliet and exclaims, It's my lady, oh, it's my love. This exclamatory sentence reveals Romeo is as extremely excited to see Juliet. He does not know her very well, yet he appears convinced that they are both destined to be together. Indeed, this is emphasised through the possessive pronoun my, which illustrates that he believes that Juliet is his rightful lover. This presents Romeo as extremely lovesick, as his world appears to have been dramatically transformed by his encounter with Juliet. Indeed, he will never be the same again unless he's united with her. Romeo is presented as lovesick, as he is willing to forsake his family for Juliet, despite not knowing her very well. Contextually, it seems that Romeo was very young. While Juliet was 13 years old, 13 years of age, it is probable that Romeo was only a few years older than her. This therefore means that he was a teenager who was likely experiencing very intense and turbulent emotions. Hence, we can presume that Shakespeare presents Romeo as being a typical teenager who's in the throes of young and passionate emotions, which are making him impulsive, and lovesick. Romeo uses more celestial imagery to describe Juliet's eyes as being two of the fairest stars in all the heaven. The repetition of the noun stars coupled with the religious reference to heaven illustrates Romeo's belief in the notion that it was divine destiny that brought him and Juliet together at the masquerade ball. His hyperbolic language which describes Juliet illustrates that Romeo believes he is destined by fate to be with Juliet. He appears to be very lovesick because he could appear to feel compelled by destiny to seek Juliet, hence Romeo is lovesick due to the fact that he feels the destiny to be together has been divinely fated. 
Elsewhere in the play, Romeo appears to be dominated by his emotions which seem to be somewhat fickle. To be sure, at the beginning of the play in Act 1, Scene 1, we find that Romeo is feeling extremely lovesick as he'd heartbroken over his unrequited love for Rosaline. Romeo laments, O loving hate, feather of lead, and he speaks using oxymorons to illustrate his inner conflicting passions. On the one hand, he appears to be enamoured by Rosaline, and he wants her to requite his love, yet her rejection is also causing him extreme pain and heartbreak. Romeo appears to be lovesick, as he is dominated by intense feelings of love. He seems to be obsessive when he falls for women in the play. However, the fact that Romeo was able to simply forget Rosaline in Act 1, Scene 5, once he saw true beauty this night, makes us as the audience question the authenticity of his feelings. Whilst Romeo is quite lovesick, the fact that he is able to rapidly move on from his melancholy over Rosaline to falling deeply in love with Juliet makes us wonder whether his feelings are enduring. Therefore, while Romeo is presented as lovesick in the play, his rapid ability to recover from his sadness over Rosaline and fall quickly in love with Juliet illustrates his emotions can also easily be changeable. The love between Romeo and Juliet quickly escalates a day after the meet. Romeo seeks out Friar Lawrence in order to legitimise the love through marriage. Friar Lawrence appears sceptical at how quickly Romeo becomes lovesick as he asks, is Rosaline that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? This illustrates that perhaps Romeo's lovesickness reveals he's too easily given over to his emotions. Moreover, we begin to see Romeo's lovesick behaviour as highly impulsive and somewhat destructive. Friar Lawrence cautions him that these violent dislikes have violent ends, therefore love moderately. In other words, Friar Lawrence reveals that Romeo is easily blinded by love and intense feelings of infatuation. However, this can be extremely destructive. Indeed, Friar Lawrence's repetition of the adjective violent foreshadows the fact that Romeo's intense lovesick behaviour will eventually lead to his death because in Act 5, when he falsely believes Juliet to be dead, he commits suicide. Thus, while Romeo is presented as lovesick towards both Rosaline and Juliet, we learn that his lovesick behaviour can be impulsive and self-destructive. To conclude, Shakespeare has successfully presented Romeo as lovesick, both within the extract as well as the play as a whole. Romeo appears to be dominated by his emotions. On the one hand, it appears that his ability to be lovesick impels him to act quickly and makes the audience sense that the love he shares with Juliet was positive as it eventually brought the Montague and Capulet families together. However, on the other hand, his lovesick behaviour is also self-destructive as it ultimately led to his suicide and it dominated his brief life, leading to the eventual tragic death of both him and Juliet. So let's quickly go over this essay again. Now, as you can see, I've started with an introduction and not only have I summarised what's happening in this passage, and of course, this passage just shows when Romeo is, he breaks into the, or rather, he sneaks into the Capulet orchard and goes to um, uh, Juliet's, where Juliet's room is positioned, and of course, this is the famous balcony scene, and before he sees her, he's basically wondering about her beauty, wondering about what she's doing within. Now, I've summarised that, but also talked about brief, broadly, Romeo does seem to be someone who's very prone to lovesickness and very impulsive. Then, in these first three paragraphs, what I've done is use the PEE method, point evidence explanation, much like I've done in my previous essay. And I've mentioned, for instance, different examples. First made the point, as you can see here, then the evidence, as you can see here, and then uh, explanations so I've explained the evidence here and what I've also specifically done is done close language analysis talking about metaphors celestial imagery and then as you can see the bulk of my writing is related also to analysis context and relating it to Romeo and of course as you can see I've essentially done the same for these two paragraphs and then I've also linked it to elsewhere in the play and I've taken two examples from elsewhere in the play but really just discuss them and um, analyze them in depth and so it's sufficient when you're thinking about elsewhere in the play if you have two really good examples which are relevant definitely use them as long as it's more quality rather than quantity don't just list lots of different examples but not go into depth you can list two examples and go into lots of depth having language analysis so as you can see here he speaks in oxymorons and then also having lots of good analysis and linking it back to the question and also as you can see the other example I've given is actually when we're thinking about Romeo being lovesick how other view him and in this case is Friar Lawrence and Friar Lawrence says he is lovesick but also he's so fickle he once initially at the play was so in love seemingly with Rosaline and so sad however suddenly he changes so what this does is maybe also 
reveal a critical approach to Romeo's lovesick behaviour as maybe impulsive given his age, he's quite young, he's probably also likely a teenager, but also it shows that it can be very destructive because also Friar Lawrence really cautions him to not be so destructive. And then I've ended with a conclusion summarising what I've written about, but also broadly talking about how his lovesick behaviour ultimately leads to his death, but actually the good outcome is that it brings the Capulet families and Montague families together, but of course the downside of this is the suicide. So I hope this helps in understanding how to write essays. As I mentioned, all of these resources are available for download. So do make sure you watch this video maybe once more. Look at the other model answer examples as well and try and apply this by practicing independently. There are two more model answers within this pack. Do read them over. And then of course, one of the things that really will improve your essay technique is actually writing and applying this knowledge. So thank you so much for listening.